K. Berkner here today with Dr. Tom Phelan, author and creator of 123 Magic and the author of The Manager Mom Epidemic. Dr. Phelan, welcome. Good morning, Kay. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. So today we're going to be talking about encouraging good behavior in kids. Um, you know, so Dr. Phelan, when it comes to kids' behavior, it sometimes seems like getting them to do the things they're supposed to do is actually harder than getting them to stop doing the things that they're not supposed to be doing, those kind of irritating or obnoxious behaviors. Have you found this to be the case? Uh, it's definitely the case. In fact, that's why we separate the two because you have different tactics. If you want a child to stop whining, for example, uh, how much cooperation do you need? You need about a half a second of cooperation and that's about it. And counting is ideally uh, designed to produce that, you know, half second, second, so they stop whining and, and it's over with. If you want a child to do uh, their homework, for example, that could be a 35, 40 minute project. And that, that's very different than a half second stopping something. It's I got to start the thing. I got to remember what I'm supposed to be doing. I have to sustain my motivation. I have to finish it uh, and all that. So we need different strategies for that. And it's important for parents to keep in mind because parents, a lot of times they use talking for everything. Uh, stop whining, start your homework. Well, and it doesn't work. And then they get frustrated. Well, we need better strategies than that. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to talk about those in just a second. Um, what are some of the areas where you've seen parents tend to have the most challenges with getting good behavior from kids? Well, I mentioned homework. That's definitely one. Homework is a, is a big one. I think probably on a, on a regular basis, um, bedtime may be the number one because bedtime is really two positive behaviors. One is going to bed. Uh, and the other is staying in bed while you're still conscious uh, and, you know, missing out on what's going on and afraid of the dark, you know, and that kind of thing. So uh, bedtime is a, is a big one. And it, uh, not knowing what to do at bedtime really ca causes a lot of lost sleep for parents and kids. And that's very important. Absolutely. So in the book, you talk about one really powerful tool that parents can use with their kids to encourage good behavior. Can you tell us what that is? I think the most powerful, <clears throat> powerful too, it, well, we're, we're talking about uh, setting up routines, but I think in setting up routines, the most powerful tool you can use is uh, praise and praising the kids for doing a good, good job. Uh, and so you set up a routine and want you to do this. And while they're doing the routine, you are praising them. You praise them during the. Uh-oh, slight pause. We've lost Dr. Phelan here. He's currently talking to us about um, how powerful praise can be as you are creating a new routine, particularly at the start of a new routine. Um, you know, if you are just instituting a new bedtime routine or a new homework routine or a new getting up and out in the morning routine, when you first start setting that up, using that praise can really help the kid to get through that. Uh, sorry, Dr. Valen, we lost you for just a second there. You were talking about times when um, you know, when you use praise during a routine to sort of help that child get through that routine and, and set it up. Right. And you want to tailor the praise to the child. So if you have a 16 year old, you don't say good job. You say that with a four year old. <laughs> uh, and so and it, it, it's important to do it in a way. 16 year olds like more business like uh, praise and, and so on. But for all the things that we're talking about, you know, the the positive behaviors, you need a routine for all of them. And probably your most powerful technique in sustaining that routine is going to be um, praise. You don't have to do it every single time they do something good, but it's really important to keep it in mind. So can you talk us through an example of what a good routine might look like, say for bedtime, since you mentioned that that was kind of one of the biggest pain points? Sure. Bedtime, and like other routines, it, the bedtime, it starts with same time, same place. You're going to do things the same way. And the first thing with bedtime is you pick a bedtime and then you stick with it. Uh, so maybe you pick nine o'clock. You have a nine-year-old, maybe nine o'clock is going to be bedtime. And then what you do with a nine-year-old nine is at 8.30 is a time to get ready for bed. And that means they have to do everything required to get ready for bed on their own without being reminded. When they're done, they check in with you. And whatever time is left before nine o'clock is time for just sitting on the bed talking or story. If you want, uh, you could read a, you know, read read a book or whatever till uh, nine o'clock. And that time with you is an automatic reinforcer of their getting ready independently, of their being independent, and it helps relax them and calm them down for bed. Um, and then nine o'clock rolls around, it lights out, um, and um, you leave the room. 
you know, hopefully <laughs> they don't follow you. You have to have a routine for that as, as well. But the, the main thing is same time, same place. Homework, four o'clock is homework time. We're going to do it the same way every day. And what you're also trying to do as a parent is get yourself out of that. And what that means is you're going to reinforce the kids more uh, for starting on their own without being reminded. Uh, so as we parents are chronic supervisors, we're terrible. Uh, we got to have our nose in there all the time, no matter what the age of the kid. You got a 17 year old, you say, do you have any homework? That's terrible. That's awful. <laughs> so we want to get rid of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, you know, as we're going through the routines, obviously consistency is really important using praise to help keep kids on track and, and reinforce the good behavior. What should a parent do if a child gets off track during a routine? Maybe they've gotten distracted or maybe they start misbehaving mid-routine. How do you kind of deal with what is a negative behavior in the middle of trying to build a positive behavior? Yeah, it sort of depends on the routine. If it's bedtime, for example, and the child gets distracted and say in the worst case scenario, nine o'clock rolls around and they're still dressed and they haven't done anything, you say it's time for bed. That means they have to get in bed immediately and get in bed and they won't like that. And we have some kids, they just you know take off their clothes, they go to sleep in their underwear. And some parents think, well, that's a terrible thing to do. No, it isn't. They'll remember that the next night. Uh, so that's, a, that's sort of natural consequences. With homework, you could do the same thing if the child's old enough, if they're over nine and they don't do their homework. And if you have the guts, uh, you could do natural consequences where they go to school the next day and they don't have their homework done and you can see what what happens? If the child, on the other hand, is uh, tantruming <clears throat> and you know throwing a fit or whining or whatever, you may go back to counting. Now, if they go to counting uh, and they need a rest period or something like that, they're going to serve the rest period, and that time is going to come out of the time they needed for their positive behavior. But while you're doing uh, during uh, during all this, is no lecturing, no nagging, no reminding. All that stuff is a real uh, killer that takes the responsibility away from your son or daughter. Absolutely. Um, so then just one last question before we wrap up here. You talk about um, no, no reminding kind of as you're going through a routine. At what age can you start setting up routines and, and kind of what length can those routines be um, for children, obviously, uh, what a four-year-old is going to be able to do is very different from what your nine or 10-year-old or your 16-year-old is able to do. Yeah. And again, it'll depend on the routine, but a rule of thumb that we use is the uh, six-year-old, 10 minutes, seven-year-old, 20 minutes, eight-year-old, 30 minutes, nine-year-old, 40 minutes. And what that means is that a typical, typically developing child can sustain the organizational and attentional behavior necessary to complete a task that's semi-boring. To, the, to those levels. So six-year-old, uh, 10 minutes, and a nine-year-old, 40 minutes. Uh, and that's what you want to keep in mind. It's, it's, it's very general, but it gives you something to hang your head on. And that means a nine-year-old should be able to do their homework. They should be able to get ready for bed uh, and, and so on. And of course, the teens should be able to handle uh, all that stuff if you set it up correctly. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Phelan. This has been terrific. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to go a little bit deeper into this topic of encouraging good behavior, Dr. Phelan will be doing a free seminar on that. So we'll put the registration link on our Facebook page. And additionally, if you head on over to 123magic.com and get signed up for our newsletter, we send out event reminders, parenting tips, and more every week. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll talk to you soon.